It has been less than six months since Mayor Eric Adams officially appointed Laura Kavanaugh FDNY commissioner. And already she is facing some major challenges, including four high-ranking FDNY chiefs filing a lawsuit yesterday wanting their jobs back, as well as the deadly threat posed by e-bike batteries that continues to plague our city. Commissioner Kavanaugh joins us tonight. Thanks for being here. We Thanks appreciate it. Me. First, we'll start with the news of the day, which is, of course, that lawsuit. Yeah. Um, it has been alleged by these chiefs that you are putting lives at risk. They say that this was a gross misjudgment, you demoting them, and also a dereliction of duty. What do you say to that? You know, so I'm not going to comment on individual personnel matters, but I just want to say that, you know, the idea um, that any of these positions are open is completely ridiculous. You know, the chiefs that I work alongside every day are completely committed to the mission of keeping our members safe and the city safe. They are all in their positions um, and doing the extraordinary work that they do every day. So this, you know, the city is safe and we're working together to make sure it is so. So, you know, any implication that it's not is completely false. And as you mentioned, we're working together on important critical safety issues like e-bikes as well. We should mention because those who have not read the lawsuit because it was just filed, yeah. they say that because of the demotion, the people who would be responding to say a five alarm fire mm -hmm. are people who had not been in that position before. And that does raise the question about safety of New Yorkers. You want to know that if you call 911, the incident commanders know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And every person we have on staff is extraordinarily experienced. They have decades of service. They are all still serving in their positions. And so, you know, that notion is simply not true. We're responding to every 911 call. Um, and our chiefs are making sure that operations are happening in the field, that our members are taken care of, and that uh, the city is safe. I know that you don't want to comment on post personnel matters, but you are new to this position. And with any new new person coming in, there is bound to be some turmoil. But with your appointment comes also the fact that you're the first female commissioner. To what are you attributing some of the turmoil that has been put in the news? Is it because you are a female? Is it because you are not a firefighter by trade? Or is it something else? You know, I'd actually just say it's far more complicated than that. You know, one, I'd point out there have been many civilian commissioners, so that's not unusual. And I, every commissioner before me has made changes to their team. I understand the change is hard, and I really appreciate that. Um, and, you know, we, I'm always willing to have a conversation um, with anyone I work with about, you know, about change and what it takes and, and how it is difficult. And I appreciate that it's hard for people. But I think it's far more complicated than to just say that um, I'm a woman. I think that, you know, we are putting together a new team, and that's always difficult, but it's also what every commissioner before me has done and, and we will do that and uh, you know the wonderful fire department's the greatest place I've ever been will continue to fulfill its mission. Do you feel the support of the 17,000 plus members of the FDNY? I do. I, I go into the field regularly. You know, my guiding principle is if I'm thinking about what the members need every day, then even when decisions are hard, I'm doing the right thing. Um, so I go into the field, you know, I listen to people. I'm willing to uh, get feedback and have tough conversations. And that's how I stay uh, grounded as commissioner. I'm always speaking to my members about how they're doing, what they're facing in the field on the Ground. So finally, for those who, for those New Yorkers, specifically those firefighters who might be watching, who say she's not the right person for the job, and this lawsuit shows that. If your top brass is going to flee, then there has to be a problem at the top. What do you say to those people specifically? You know, I would say, like I said, every single day, one, I know that the chiefs who work alongside me feel that way and that I feel that way, that our entire devotion is to them and their mission. And I can assure them every single moment of every single day, all night, uh, I, you know, wake up and uh, get calls and worry about them. They are what guides me every day and keeping them safe is my mission. Will you be responding with any of your own legal action? I, I'm not going to comment on any legal action. Okay. Time. All right. So that's just one of the issues that you're facing. As we said, there are a number of other things that affect, of course, all New Yorkers. And the other one is e-bikes. Yes. Um, we have, uh, it feels like every day we are reporting on a tragedy that occurred with a lithium ion battery. Mm -hmm. Why do you believe this problem seemingly has ballooned? So I think it's a couple of things, you know, uh, e-bikes boomed during the pandemic, right, where this increase for delivery uh, was, you know, really needed. And I think this is also a classic case that we've seen before where the technology leapt ahead of the regulation. And so we're coming at this from all angles. One is regulation. So, you know, I've called on the Consumer Product Safety Commission to better regulate these devices. Um, they've actually confiscated a number of them, tried to take them off of online marketplaces and even uh, are looking at confiscating them at their point of entry into the port. 
boats. Um, so that's one form of regulation. But then we're also trying to do education because the reality is a lot of these bikes are here. They're already in people's homes. We respect that delivery workers need them in order right. to do their jobs. And so trying to educate them that if they have a bike in their home, how can they uh, have that bike as you know safely? How can they make sure their family is safe? Uh, and you've seen, I think, some of our safety messaging, which is really around you know making sure you never leave the device unintended, uh, unattended when you're charging it, making sure it's not blocking an exit. Um, I don't know if you saw the, the video we put out, but when these catch fire, they explode. Literally um, explode. Literally explode. It creates so much smoke and fire that it would be nearly impossible. You know, It really destroys everything in its path. It would be nearly impossible to get out of your home if one was uh, in a hallway or an exit. And so really making sure people know that, that they're really dangerous, um, that they have hurt and killed people, and that there are ways that you as an individual can have one in your home and still be safer. Do you want them banned? You know, I think that we have to come at it a couple ways, and, and I say that because they are already in people's homes. And so even if we were to ban them, it would not stop these issues from occurring. Mm -hmm. So we're focusing on regulation so that the new devices uh, will be safer. As, as much of the technology we use today, like your laptop, it has a lithium-ion battery, and it's been regulated um, to be safer. And that, that's possible with these devices as well. Uh, and then I'd also point out that many of these high-profile incidents you've seen, including the one where our members were hanging out of the 21st-story window. Basically Rescue scaling someone, the building. Scaling the building, putting their own lives on the line. They were banned in that building. And so we think it's really important that at the same time we look at regulation, we have to focus on talking to the community because the you know the bikes are in people's homes already. All right, Commissioner Kavanaugh, we're gonna leave it there for tonight. Okay. Thanks Thank for your time. You. Appreciate it. All right.